This is the video solution for problem six from Super Quiz One. Another problem related to, well, equivalence relations. And in this one, we're given a relation, call it G, on the non zero integers, uh, where if you have two integers, non zero integers, uh, they're related if and only if their product is positive. And uh, the claim of the problem is that it's an equivalence relation. The problem isn't to actually show that it's an equivalence relation, right? I'm, I'm just telling you that it is. Um, of course, one can, can check, right? If you, you take two numbers, um, non-zero integers, and square them, of course, or multiply it by itself, right? You'll, you'll get something which is, is positive. Um, if the product of two numbers is positive, well, reverse the order. It's still positive. Um, if two numbers multiplied together are positive, and then you take that second one and multiply it by something else and get positive, well, I claim that the first two essentially have to multiply to give you something positive because, well, what does it mean here when these two multiply to give you something positive? It means they have the same sign, right? They're either both positive or both negative. So if we were going to multiply, um, say, xy and get that was positive and yz and get that was positive, then either we have plus and plus here or minus and minus. Um, and then this y, well, if the y was plus here, it's still plus there, so the z would have to be a plus. In which case you can see the x and the z have the same sign. And similarly here, once I know y is negative, of course that y has to be negative, and so now this z has to be negative, so that the product is positive. And again, x and z have the same sign, and so their product is still positive. So transitivity works. All right, but you didn't have to show that. Okay, so let's look at what we are asked. Well, the first question is, is why did I, I being the right person who wrote the question, exclude zero from the integers in this problem? You might say, geez, you know, couldn't you have just gone in here and just made this a relation on the integers? And the answer is no, right? Why? Well, what happens when you're trying to check, say, reflexivity? Well, you have to make sure that the square, right, x times x, is always going to be positive. And if you allow x to be 0, then the answer is 0 when you square it, right? You would not have reflexivity. Um, now, a reasonable thing you might ask is, well, what if, um, what if we replaced greater than 0 with greater than or equal to 0? So it turns out in this case it still won't work. Um, so let's say, for example, um, we, we took our x to be something not 0, like say 2. Um, and then we take our y to be, well, how about 0? And then our z maybe could be negative 2. If I take the product, 2 times 0, I get 0. And that would satisfy that the product is at least 0. Okay, but then I can take 0 times negative 2, and I'll also get 0. Okay, again, this product satisfies that it's at least 0. However, if I multiply 2 with negative 2, I get negative 4, which is not at least 0. So I wouldn't get transitivity in that way either. So for this to work, or even with a small change making this greater than or equal to 0, I really need to exclude 0. It just causes the issues in this case. All right. So the reason why we have to exclude 0 is because if we include it, we don't get an equivalence relation. All right, let's move on to the second question. So now we're looking at the set of equivalence classes of the non-zero integers modulo this equivalence relation, what in class we call a quotient set. Okay, but it's just you take the set of equivalence classes. So the elements of the set are equivalence classes. And we want to know what the cardinality is. So we're going to have to explore this, uh, what happens when we apply this uh, equivalence relation to the non-zero integers. And, and in some sense, we already have up here. So we know that if two elements are going to be related, then they need to have the same sign. And of course, if they do have the same sign, then they will be related. So if we take the integers, we break it up at zero. Of course, we're going to throw this out, right? Let me make a, an open dot here at zero. We know that two things are going to be related if they have the same sign. So all of the stuff to the right, right? Of course, we're only getting discrete elements here, right? So you're only getting at 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. OK? 
Okay, All of these are going to be in the same equivalence class because when you multiply them together, you get something which is positive. So if you take the set of positive integers, these form an equivalence class under this, um, under this relation G. On the other hand, if we, we move over to the left side of zero, so to the negatives, those also are going to form an equivalence class. Because when you multiply two negative numbers together, you also get something which is positive. So if I take the negative integers, these form an equivalence class under G. Okay, but that's that's it, right? We've covered all of the non-zero integers, right? We can mark this down here that it's non-zero. We've covered all of them. So there's only two equivalence classes. Okay? So we can write down here that, well, the actual elements of the quotient set are just the set of positive integers and the set of negative integers. And so if we want the cardinality, the cardinality of the set, well remember cardinality, that's just the number of elements in the set, and that's just equal to two. Right? There are two equivalence classes. Okay, again, we don't care that there's an infinite number of elements in these sets. The elements aren't the elements in these sets, they are the sets. All right. Finally, we want to be find a set of representatives for the equivalence classes. All right, so you have to remember what that means. So you write down all the equivalence classes. Here we have two of them. And a set of representatives is when you choose one element from each equivalence class. So we need to choose one positive integer and one negative integer. Okay, how about one comma negative one? Oh, you don't like that one? Okay, how about um, 47 and negative 314? Why not? Just take any positive and any negative, and you now have a set of representatives for the equivalence classes because you've chosen exactly one element from each equivalence.